What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? So for today's video, we're going to dive into the world of stingers, or technically electrode holders, and we're going to take a look at the differences, and we're going to look at some that maybe you've never seen, but you probably would want after the end of this video. With that said, let's get into it. So if you have stick welded before, then you are no stranger to a stinger. These things come with pretty much every stick welder, and they vary between dirt cheap, aka basically a jumper cable alligator clip, all the way up to high end, more like this guy over here, designed for a specific task. And one of the things I've gotten asked over the years is if I had any like recommendations on stingers and you know, give my opinion. Well, this video is kind of going to be it, and you'll probably learn a little something. Maybe you'll look at a different product, like I said, by the end of this video. So, what we have in front of us are the three most common stick electrode holders that I've ran into, and that is this, which this is branded in ESOB, but the body of it, this part right here, is branded ESOB, but the rest of it is basically what they call a Tweeko. It's a Tweeko style. That's very, very popular. The next style is what's called a Lenko, which is this guy. And then this guy right here is very common, although not in this form. This would be like what I would call the Lincoln style. So this Lincoln style comes on Fronius machines. It looks just like this, but it's a brand of Fronius. This is on all the old Lincoln tombstones, albeit with a different handle. But this style Lincoln... Lenko's generally come with anything Miller. Miller uses Lenko and just rebrands it as their own. And then Tweeko, which is now owned by Aesop, any Aesop product will get some variation of this. Maybe not as high-end as this one, but you get the picture. Now, if you do a fair amount of stick welding, and depending on what size rods you're doing, what amperage, these things work a lot different than one another. One of the things I've found over the years is that this Lenko style, the way that it's set up, which isn't too much different than the ESOB here, uh, it tends to wear better. And what I mean by that is if you're one of those guys that sticks a rod and then opens up this and rips it off and you arc onto the jaw, I find that the Lenko style generally lasts a little bit longer before the erosion on the jaw becomes a problem where it won't hold on to a rod. Let's take a look at that. Hopefully you can see that in there, but over time what ends up happening when you pull this off of a stuck rod, it will erode the top jaw and sometimes it'll even erode the lower jaw. And what'll end up happening is even with this thing closed, this with it fully closed and touching in the front more or less won't pinch a rod tight enough to hold on to it. Now with eighth inch rods, it's generally not really an issue, but if you run a lot of 332, or 1 16th rods, that erosion pretty much is going to smoke your stinger and then you either have to file this all down to get it to close tighter or throw it out and get a new one. And what I've found over the years is the Lenko, because the one jaw is shaped a little bit steeper of a radius, uh, when you blow it out a few too many times, it still tends to hold a rod okay. The Tweeko the upper jaw here is very, I guess, flat, and it doesn't take much of a blowout on it. Too many stuck rods before it no longer clamps onto a rod. These guys generally will take, I don't know, 20 to 30 rod sticks before you're not going to be able to hold a 1 16th rod, so not really that many. The Lincoln style has a flat jaw in it. I don't know if you can see that. This flat jaw setup here works. But again, when you're talking 1 16th rods and even sometimes 332, these don't hold on to it that well after you arc through it a bit. So these are like the middle to upper end of conventional stingers. And honestly, if you do a lot of stick welding, you owe it to yourself to buy one of these. But if you really do a lot of stick welding or you have a hard time not sticking the rod, you might want to look at some other options out there. And that's what these two are for. These guys here are unconventional stingers, and for you overseas, you might be more familiar with this style here. And what this is, is a twist lock stinger. You actually rotate the handle in order to pinch a rod. And I got a 
332 rod here. So you put it in there and then you tighten it and now your rod is more or less held in the jaw. And you can reposition this by bending the rod in any direction that you want. So a lot different than a conventional stinger. Now, this might not be the perfect solution if you stick a lot of rods because guess what? If this thing is stuck here, you're going to have to quick twist and then pull this out in order to, well, unstick the rod. Now, once you get used to using one of these, it's really not as bad as it seems. You just automatically do it without thinking. But again, if you have a tendency to stick a lot of rods, this might be frustrating, at least at first. But there are some benefits to this design that you might not know about. With the way that this is designed, more or less, if you don't have a rod in it and you set it down on anything, it will not arc out. It would have to either go into here or somehow all the way along the handle here where the power cord would be. But it's almost impossible to arc out this stinger onto something. Likewise, if you're sopping wet with your hands and you grab this anywhere, odds of you getting lit up and being part of the circuit are about zero. So these inherently are fairly safe. And what I've been told, I don't know if it's true, is a lot of guys overseas, they have regulations where this is the style you have to have. Now, some of them might look a little different than this. There's an ESOB one. I'll put a picture up that looks a little bit different, but they all function the same way as this. This is like a twist lock. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are kind of laughing at this and saying, ah, that's a joke. You don't need it. And for a lot of things, you don't. But I ended up using one of these, the ESOB version of this, for about eight, nine months doing uh, all sorts of like repairs on equipment and stuff. And I got to say, it honestly was pretty nice because I knew when I set it down that it was not going to arc out on something. Versus when you're talking some of these, I mean, this one isn't too bad. This has quite a bit of jaw exposed. And if you're in the back of a garbage truck or something full of junk and you just go and haphazardly toss this or you set it down, trip over it, and this jaw comes in contact with something, you can start a fire, get shocked. You know, all of that stuff can happen, and I've done it, trust me, I've done enough stick welding in tight spots. Something like this, you're not going to have that problem. Likewise, uh, because a rod is so well held into this, because a jaw literally pinches it, you don't have any issue with these, generally speaking, with your 1 16th rods or your 332 holding onto it tight for basically forever. You don't generally wear these out too bad which is really nice because if you do stick a rod, you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to twist it, break it off, and you're not probably removing it anyways. Although, watch out for your arc strikes on that. Not only is it less likely to short out, one of the more interesting things you can do with this particular one is if you cut the handle back, you can use this to get into super tight places that you simply can't with these other ones because the handle's in the way or the length of it. So you can use this for other things, I guess. Does that mean it's going to work well for you? Well, you be the judge on that. Now let's talk about that guy over there. This is what's called a Stinger V. I used to think they were called a Stinger 5, but the V that they're talking about is the V-notch in this electrode holder part. This is kind of a cool piece of kit. I actually bought one after having used it on a job for a while, a uh, company one, and I really liked the way it worked. And I thought I would buy one for myself because I liked it so much. What this is, is it's sort of like a hybrid between this style where it pinches the rod and this which it has the easy release handle. And what this has is when you squeeze the handle, a lever comes down and when you put your rod into the V-notch, it clamps it down onto here and you're basically able to bend the rod in any direction that you want. And just like this guy, and if you were to stick the rod, you could easily break it off or you could just hit the lever and it comes right out. There's very little travel needed. You know, you're talking like a quarter of an inch and you can release the rod, which is a lot better than some of these other ones. You got to really squeeze them depending in order to get the rod out. The other interesting thing is this appears to have some kind of a steel insert maybe it's stainless i'm not sure it's brass on the outside for conductivity and in the inner part that the rod sits on is not brass and they designed it that way so that when you release a rod that is stuck 
and it's obviously got current going through it that the arc does not just chew this up really fast. Because I'm not joking, you get a couple bad 332 rods in a normal stinger where you stuck it real bad and you pull it off and it arcs, and the jaw is already screwed up. This thing is designed to handle a lot more of that. Now, this is kind of an oddball piece of equipment because the conventional one of these does not have plastic uh, shielding it, so it's more or less exposed brass. Now, I'm too much of an idiot to think that I can get away with that, aka you set it down like this, it shorts out right on your table, and guess what, you got problems, or even worse, you arc mark up something that you're welding on. So this particular one is not how they normally come. This is an option, but it's a plastic shield to where it's protected. Now this handle is indeed metal. It has some kind of rubberized, probably flex seal on it to help prevent it from shorting out. But guess what? If you get nicks in this and set it down on what you're welding, it will arc out. So from a safety perspective, this would... I guess be frowned upon because it's much easier if you have a wet glove to be grabbing this and get a potential jolt. It's much easier to arc mark on something if you set it down. So again, this is kind of more of a specialty item, but this works so well and is so easy to use that for a lot of what I do with stick welding, I think I'm going to switch and use this full time. It's just so easy to pull a stuck rod off and it's just the feel of it. The size of it for my big hand works really well. The downside to this is cost. I mean, you can pick up one of these Hobart ones for probably well under 50 bucks. Something like this is going to set you back probably about $90 to $125, depending on where you buy it from and what options you take, which I know is a lot. But if you do a lot of stick welding, honestly, if you go to something like this, you probably won't wind up going back to these just because of how versatile this is. And in case you're wondering if this is heavy, it is a little bit heavier than a conventional one, but honestly not by much. Because this is just plastic and rubber, all of the brass is up in here, so it's not like absurdly heavy by any means, it just looks kind of beefy. This guy right here actually is about the same as well, so not really too much heavier going to that. These are all of the common ones, like I said, that are out there, but I want to talk a little bit about this Lincoln style here. Uh, I think that this style doesn't get a lot of love, and it actually is pretty good. And the reason I say that is this body is far more compact. Granted, they do sell a smaller Lenko than this, but it pays, if you do a lot of stick welding, to get a little stinger like this, maybe even one smaller than this, or chop the body down, maybe cut the handle a little bit. Because if you've ever been under a trailer doing a repair or something, something this big can be borderline useless. It's just too hard to move, it'll get tied up. It really pays guys to get a little guy like this to have. And not only that, Put a little cable on it. Now this is probably, well it says 16 mil, I don't even know what that works out to be, but a little 4 gauge or even 8 gauge uh, cable that's super flexible and one of these are smaller will get you out of a tight spot. No, you shouldn't use it all day and no, you're not going to be burning no 532 rods with it, but it will get you in a tight spot far better than something like this or even this. And likewise, when I said if this thing was chopped down a little bit, you can see how small, I mean, it basically fits in your palm of your hand if it's chopped here, how useful that could be as well. Oh, this is not connected inside in case you're wondering, so no, you're not going to get shot. So it goes without saying, if you have a cheap Amazon special welder and you don't have something that's like any of these and it's one of them dirt cheap stingers it pays to upgrade to any of these are going to be better than what you have those cheap ones man they tend to get hot if you run any kind of amperage through them and they just don't last long so any of these would be an upgrade if i had to pick which one i really like honestly i've used the lenko for years and that tends to be my go-to if i buy one for a new machine that i have I'm fine with the Esob Tweeko style. That's what most workplaces around where I'm at buy for people. And they work. They just don't last with 332 rods, uh, if, at least for me. 
and aka I always get the junk equipment generally speaking so it's already plumb wore out by the time it comes to me which is fine but honestly I do think the Lenko is a little bit better than a Tweakle but after having used one of these for about a week week and a half I've really come to enjoy this. This is a really nice piece of kit. And by the way, I bought this with my own money. I'm not a sponsored shill pushing video channel here, but this is really nice to use. I do have doubts as to how well this coating on the handle will work without shorting out the stuff. So that's something to be aware of. And they do make leather like handle covers here to help with that. But this is just such a joy to use, and I know because the one I had uh, had been seriously used and it still was in good shape, I know that this is going to last. But yeah, anyways, if you got a favorite stinger that you really like that you have used over the years, feel free to recommend it to us. And otherwise, until next time, guys, take care.